Welcome to your Family Health Revolution conversation series with Carla Atherton and friends, where our HFF family comes together not to tell you what you should do, but what you can do. Take charge of your health. You can do this. In fact, you're the only person who can. Hello, this is Carla Atherton, director of the Healthy Family Formula and host and producer of the Children's Health Summit. And I am here today with another session for the Your Health Family Health Revolution conversation series with friends. And I am here today with my good friend, Dania Teleb, and we are talking about, I guess, imposter syndrome or feeling like being imposters and in our own family, leading our own families to health and how we can overcome that, what that experience is. It's going to be a really beautiful, organic conversation, and I hope you enjoy it. So first, before I invite Dania to join the conversation, I'm going to uh, read a little bio about her. So Dania Teleb is a 44-year-old full-time mom and a former homeschooling parent. She lives in Arizona with two of her four daughters. Having to move across the world multiple times in a span of 21 years, taught her so much about different cultures and backgrounds. Those experiences have greatly impacted building her character and parenting her children. Ever since she was 14, she has always valued the relationship between food and health. Since feeding the soul toward optimal wellness does not only stop at the nutritional aspect of food, she chose to look for more answers to preventative and holistic approaches. Dania joined HFF with the intention of helping herself and her family develop an empowered quality of life. So welcome, Dania, to the conversation. Thank you, Carla. Well, I'm just excited about this. And like I said, I want to just have an organic conversation with you because um, I feel like, like every time I work with someone, and especially like, you know, we have this, we grow and have this relationship over years of time. And so we've had that opportunity to do that. And we've had these conversations about this particular topic a few times, which is why I think that you're you're like our resident expert about discussing this stuff because you're always there and involved in that conversation. And I so appreciate your candor and your sharing about your own experience. And I want people who are listening to know that they're not alone in that and that we um, we all have these feelings. It's just what do we do with them? And to, you know, move through and into the outcomes or the, um, I guess, evolution. I always use the word evolution that we're, we're moving toward. So would you just start and give me a little, I can start with myself, but everybody's probably sick of hearing from me already. Mm -hmm. So, um, so would you start by telling us like a little bit about you and your health journey? Like I'm literally going to start with a hugely broad question like that. And then we're going to, I'll just we'll just hop in and keep going. Sure. So first of all, I just want to tell you that um, I'm extremely grateful to have you in my life. Uh, because ever since I met you, honestly, um, I've learned a lot about mental health, emotional health, and overall health, you know, it's been a blessing to just, you know, lead my journey and you are in it, you are with me through it all. So that's something big for sure. You know, that's something that is keeping me going. I just wanted to let you know that. Um, now, as a parent, I could tell you nothing is harder than being a parent. Uh, I'm 40 plus and um, after, you know, all these years on earth, I could tell you that uh, I, I have yet to, uh, to meet, you know, a perfect parent. Um, I myself, I'm not perfect. And um, I just, I think, I certainly think um, no one is, you know, we're just here to um, perfect our journey at our own levels. Each one of us has their own um, personality, their own capacity, their own ability. Um, and we have to be us in order for us to lead um, ourselves and our children. So um, I think 
you know, if, if you're doing the best you can, that means you are being a good parent. You know, that's simply it. And um, I can't tell you how many times, I mean, I, I, I've doubted myself uh, with uh, being the parent I am today. I, I have always considered myself an imposter mom. Mm -hmm. um, I probably looked into, um, you know, other people's uh, journey and I just checked myself and I was like, okay, wait a second. Uh, I don't think I'm doing enough. Um, I had self-sacrificed my, you know, so much in me to just kind of like imitate others or to kind of like um, fix myself, if you want to call it, you know, uh, just thinking that I'm not good enough for my children or not good enough for myself as far as self-image goes. Um, and that took years and years and years of, you know, experimenting here and there. Uh, until I realized, like, wait a second, um, I think I'm just, you know, uh, on auto mode all the time. Just, you know, um, I don't acknowledge my self-care. I don't acknowledge my uh, self-repair. Uh, my emotional regulation is absent. Um, uh, you know, my boundaries, I, I just, what boundaries? You know, as a mom, I just... Uh, I have to keep on giving, you know, there's no such thing uh, until I hit the bottom rock. You know, I realized that my anxiety skyrocketed and this is when I, it was like a wake up call for me. It's like, okay, um, I think I'm gonna retire self-sacrifice, mm -hmm. you know, that's it. Mm -hmm. And this is when I, um, I wanted to uh, just, sit with myself a lot more than I did before, give myself time at least, you know, to just, uh, um, you know, like a deep dive, you know, seek, seek help from within, you know, like, okay, what is it exactly that I want? And what is it exactly that I need? And yes, I want, and I need those things. And I have to meet both because sometimes there are things we need. And then we think like, okay, well, but I want a few things. I'm just not, I'm not going to acknowledge my wants. I'm just going to stick to my needs. No, it's both. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I didn't realize this for the longest time, you know? Um, and quite honestly, like, um, I didn't also, I mean, I, I was like modeling all the time. I'm, I was a homeschooling mom for quite a few years. And I didn't realize that my kids are watching all the time. So, so how am I like, they're, you know, they're watching me and then they're feeling exactly the way I feel, you know, if I'm low, I could see it in their faces, you know, oh, and vice yeah. versa. Yeah, exactly. So um, basically I was not serving them either. It's not like, you know, by self-sacrificing, I was actually doing them a big favor and killing myself, you know, no, I was actually hurting them too, you know, with me. Mm -hmm. So um, I got to the point where like, you know, I, I figured, you know, okay, I'm, I know that I'm gonna feel like an imposter until I push myself through, you know? And then once you push yourself through, you explode the syndrome, you know, you kill it, you break it, you know, because you're just not acting like an imposter you are acting, you know, through it all. You are actually moving forward. You are pushing yourself. The feelings are going to be there. I'm going to feel the self-doubt. I'm going to feel like I'm not enough. I'm going to always, um, you know, uh, have the fear of like, uh, okay, but, um, you know, other moms seem to be pulling it together. I'm not. Um, all these thoughts, you know, continuously coming the only thing that would actually help is pushing through, is actually taking actions. Mm. And that will slowly take away those feelings and you know crush them and not necessarily crush them because we don't wanna suppress our feelings, but eventually they'll fade away because you are self-training into pushing yourself. Even when, you're, when you feel like 
it's the opposite. That's it. I'm going to go for it. Mm -hmm. I'm good enough. Okay. Um, yes, I'm the meanest mom. That's fine. One day um, I'm planning on becoming the nicest, meanest mom. That's okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, because that's what my, uh, my, especially my older kids call me, you know, you're the meanest mom ever, <laughs> you know, that's okay. Yeah. That's fine. You know, but especially because, um, I mean, I know they, they've went through a lot. We moved so many times. Yeah. Uh, we lived in 20 houses in the span of 21 years of marriage. Mm -hmm. Now, um, post-divorce, after the 21 years, um, they're separated from their younger siblings. And uh, they're, you know, they feel torn between parents uh, trying to figure out, you know, their lives. Um, it's funny because that reminds me of... Um, uh, you know, at some point I was at an airport and this sweet lady came up to me and she's like, she saw me running after the kids and hustling and bustling and, you know, like getting all tired. Um, uh, my two older, they were toddlers at the time. She looked at me and she's like, just enjoy this time. You know, now they are running and they're walking and running, yeah. but believe me, one day they're going to start growing wings and they're going to fly and you're going to miss those times, you know? And um, yeah, and even, you know, now, now they're away from me. My two older ones, they're um, actually in California. They're um, with their dad. They're not that happy with their situation. They're complaining. Again, you know, I'm, I'm a mean mom, but, but, you know, I'm, they don't realize that how happy I am and proud of them for trying to stand alone, to uh, push themselves. For my oldest, who's about to turn 22 um, in July, for me to see her being able to to actually drive from California to AZ and back and forth, and you know yeah. me yeah. starting to feel worried about her, but then eventually I started to let go of that fear. You know, mm -hmm. I probably did one thing. You know, while raising them, was actually probably. Um, uh, didn't serve them well either. It was actually sheltering them so much. And that's another thing that is, again, it's part of being feeling, you know, that uh, imposter syndrome, you know, yeah. it's like, well, um, if I don't shelter them enough, then I'm not doing this right. You know, I'm, I'm not serving them. You're not protecting but actually, them. You're not doing what I'm yes, exactly. to do. You're, exactly. Yeah. But then you yes. disempower them, right? I've done the yes. same thing. I'm like, okay, if I don't do all this, what I supposed, I think I should do as a mom. And if I don't, I mean, mom, or I'm neglectful, or I'm, you know, I'm leaving you to your own devices. But what we do is we actually stunt their growth. So it's, yes. it, yeah. So it's like, I actually was going to do a podcast about this, Dania, and I still will. And it's the helicopter mom, right? Moving yeah. out of that role yeah. into hummingbird. I was mom. like that forever. Hummingbird. Hummingbird mom. Yes. So when you're needed, you can zip in and zip out, but you're not there all the time. Like you, you're yeah. just very, you're flexible, you're adaptable, you're I there love when you're needed. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Moving yes. into that role. Yes. I want to return to some of the things that you were saying. Um, they were so like, I was like, look at, I'm taking all these notes because you're, 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 I love these words of wisdom because you start, you're, thank you so much for your candor, candor, because you're talking about like really deep things that a lot of people don't even want to admit, like feeling like an imposter, like an imposter mom yeah. and not enough. And I think that you're right on the money where, you know, a lot of us moms are trying to be these warrior women, self-sacrificing and really li literally like, like you said, killing yourself, like really making us, you know, it's yeah. not a happy place to be and it's not sustainable. Um, exactly. and, and, and it come and it, it's like, I don't know if it's like a chicken and egg thing, but this not enough feeling of like, and I, I, I felt the same way, you know, we had a lot of health issues as you know, and you know, yeah. not feeling like I was doing enough, but then I was doing too much and I was doing the wrong things. And yeah. you know, what is it I'm supposed to do? And how am I supposed to like, it's all this weight on my shoulders because there's a, you know, with parenting comes a great deal of responsibility so exactly you know one thing i want to put put out there to you 
is Naomi, and you probably read her stuff. I mean, I'm sure we went through some of this stuff in our the programs and stuff, but um, yeah. Naomi Aldort's um, notion of raising our children, raising ourselves. Uh -huh. So we're basically raising ourselves, not our children. So isn't that exactly. a concept, to, right? Like, so you're exactly so what I'm hearing you say is how you're you've navigated through this and how you continue to navigate through this is to continue to support, nurture, evolve yourself. Is that right? Yes. Yes, yeah. exactly. And, um, you know, reparenting is not about putting down our parents' uh, ways of raising us. Yeah. You know, it's just that they did their part, but as an adult, no one is coming to tell me to move and exercise. No one is coming to tell me mm. it's time to put my phone down. No one is coming to, um, you know, be the, I'm sorry, the, the butt whipper and tell me, you know, like, okay, uh, that's it, enough. You know, you, you had, you've been on the phone with your friend forever, you know, uh, you need to move on and do something, you know, that's beneficial for the day, you know, or whatever it is. We have to, um, we have to, I mean, the self-talk that we have for ourselves mm -hmm. needs to be in a reasonable ma matter. You know, it's, it's like reasonable self-discipline to a point where I'm just, okay, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going by with my day, but at the same time, I'm not pushing myself too hard. I'm not um, sitting around. I, I have to, I have to reparent myself. I have to remind myself. Yeah. And when I, when I do this, I'm actually also setting an example for my children that, you know, one day you're going to have to reparent yourself because yes, I messed up here and there. I probably didn't push you enough but it's your time to actually, you know, push yourself through to get to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. Because for the longest time, I didn't get to where I wanted to be because I suppressed my needs, you know, yeah. don't do that. Yeah. And you yeah. know, it's an interesting case. So I love how things intersect in your life, right? Like had we had this conversation last week or in a month from now, it would be totally different. So and the reason why mm -hmm. I say that is that I'm doing a breath work training thing right now. And one yeah. of the things that the instructor said is that there is no such thing as failure, only feedback. And when you say messed up, you know, we off we that's one thing about beating or speeding ourselves up as parents. Like we're like, well, I messed up, I made mistakes. And we talk about that and then we learn how to like accept ourselves in all our flaws. But how about we're not flawed? How about everything like those are not necessarily exactly. like mistakes or failures like it's something yes. maybe that we yes. learn from it we get feedback from it it might I mean you know there could be things where you more things that it's like okay that was literally like I should never have done that which is like maybe you, you spanked your child at one point or you yelled at them you know when you never would yell at them or you gave them an uh, like an idea that they weren't they weren't good enough or you said something harsh or something like that where we just like I have those moments like I call them what did I call my bad mommy moments like where I look back and literally I actually can look back now actually thinking about it now I don't have that visceral like sort of sick response to like I can't believe I did that like I like 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 such guilt like just and I and I erase all of the awesomeness of my parenting like I look back and I go, you know what? I'm I'm a damn good mom. I'm a damn good mom. But those things that I did that I felt were wrong or were mistakes or messed up or, you know, like something I, I didn't do right, um, they like outshine them sometimes. Not always, but sometimes. And I know yes. for a lot of people listening, it might always outshine their the what they're doing right or what not. I don't even know what the word is, right? Like what they're doing that they consider to be right. And I'm not yes. saying any of those things I should have done, or, you know, we should be like, oh, I'm fine with it. I'm still going to love myself. But it's, it's where we let that overtake and overshadow um, are, are really like defining who we are as human beings or, and as parents that we start to go down that road of feeling bad and not enough. And then we don't shine our lights bright enough to, empower our kids because we don't take care of ourselves we have low self-worth 
we do that's when we we go into all those yes. habits that are not serving us or others so it took me a long time to look at those those mommy moments yeah. and I would I would talk to my kids like I would say my son I was like I am so sorry I can't believe I did that like I don't know why I said that to you and he was 12 at the time and he's like mom I'm over it we've talked about this like just get over it and you know like so maybe that's part of the process talking to them you know being yes. open about being human you know I think that that yeah if we can look at it that way we can shine our light rather than kind of cower and, and be afraid to um you know make mistakes or get that feedback from our relationships with our children and same goes to uh to our positive self-talk as well sometimes uh we have to realize that um you know when i talk to myself am i being that uh you know nice parent like um mm. am i being soft to myself <laughs> since i'm doing reparenting anyways you know or am I being that uh, abusive parent who's just mm. like yelling all the time and being harsh? Um, yeah. Okay, well, again, with reasonable self-discipline, I may go in between. That's okay. Sometimes I need a nudge. Sometimes I need a whip in the back, you know? Yeah. And yeah. that applies to us and to our children. And I think that there, I think the key thing, you said the word awareness. And that's what we do all the time. Like it's yeah. like body awareness, men, what your mind is saying, and w watching your thoughts, listening to like listening to your body, your, like the symptoms you have. If you're not feeling good, uh, there's something going on. Look to the roots, right? Yeah. And being able to and and the spirit, the emotion, all those things. Like we're listening, and that's yes. what the core of our work is: is to to encourage people to listen. And then once you know what's going yes. on. And, Oh, I don't have to believe this thought or I don't have to react this way or I can use this tool or I can, you know, eat this way or do make these adjustments and be adaptable. Again, it's all feedback for us to be able to adjust exactly. and evolve and, you know, um, and feel, I don't, I don't even want to say like feel better all the time because we want to feel good. Sure. But sometimes yes. those processes are uncomfortable and that's okay too right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Because they're uncomfortable to um, leading to the way of feeling good. You yeah. know, um, I'd rather be uncomfortable turning my life around to the way I want it than to be uncomfortable and unhappy. And stay you know? that way. It, because exactly. that, that discomfort is, is, is comfortable. You're comfortable in the yes. discomfort. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. It's familiar. Exactly. It's not scary. It's not, it, you'll know what to expect. I'm going to feel like crap again tomorrow, but at least I know what to expect. But if I do this, allow this uncomfortable process of literally like, like last week, oh, I cried. I cried a lot. And, and because we had a lot of shifting potential loss, like loss in my, yeah. when you said you're apart from two of your children, my la our last one left the nest. Okay. So like, I, know. Especially, yeah. I know you know it's about me. And I probably talk about way too much in this series. I would probably say in every interview. But, it but that's that's what I love about you, that you're always, you know, connected. And that's beautiful. Ah, thank you. It's just, but I had to be um, in that discomfort. I didn't want to shut it down. I didn't want to say this is bad. I shouldn't be feeling this way. Or am I too attached to my kids? If we should be like society not. and just, you know, let them go. And because that's what it's, no, I, I was having an, like a really profound experience. And I just had to be a, like, it's going to, whatever, go ahead, cry, go ahead and talk about it. Go ahead. And, you know, and it helped me to move through that so much easier without it being, um, like stuck down. And so it just helped me to grow as a exactly. person and our, and our relationships are so much deeper because of it, you know? And yes. yeah. So, yes. all right. So there were a couple of things. Uh, also that I want to highlight that you said, and I love, I don't know where you heard this, but retire self-sacrifice. That is so yes. good. Did you like, did you make that up? <laughs> um, actually, to be honest, I, I listened to a lot of parenting, um, uh -huh. like podcasts on the go. So uh, I don't remember exactly where I picked it from, but I did hear the word retire, but I, I put it together with, with self-sacrifice. So. so good. 
It's so good. We, we're going to have another um, talk that we go, like, I'm talking, who am I talking? Dory, Dorian Abbott. We're going to be going way more, like, way, um, way deeper into this whole idea. Yes, of I saw of her talk there. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to unpack that, like, really good. Um, but I wanted to just yeah. mention that because I love that. Like, how, hang that up. Don't need that. That is not serving me. It's going. Yes. And what you said, explode the syndrome explode the syndrome yeah. like i mean we could say like diffuse okay yeah, yeah that's yeah. That's, that's definitely we're... something i heard um from from um like uh some podcast that i also listened yeah. to like a while back and that was that was a point that really touched my heart because because i know i know and i admit that i am an imposter mom for i've been this way for the longest time so just to know, you know, that, that word actually just uh, kind of like made me feel like, okay, yes, I did get to the point where I am reaching this level of like, that's it. You know, there's a breaking point. I'm not going to yeah. let this yeah. stop me from moving forward, you know? And yes, the, the, the bad feeling is diminishing and, and it's beautiful to see the progress, you know? So that. that's for sure. Well, there's, and I, I'm a wordsmith, you know this. I mean, I also teach like healing through writing programs and stuff like that. And, and yeah, language yeah. to me is key, like, because we are very verbal. I mean, we, we have all these different ways of communicating, but verbally is a very powerful way to, to communicate and to heal and to recognize and to reflect and to, you know, to make sense yes. of, you know, everything that happens mm -hmm. in our lives. So when you, would that word explode, the syndrome right like it's like it's like literally obliterated like and I love that you talk about podcasts because I will I listen to them all the time I think that's another way of yeah. empowering ourselves is and, and to exactly. move forward is to hear other people's thoughts and words and and try them on and and they become part of our collective consciousness so when I've done this so many times I quote somebody and I'm like I have no idea where that came from I'm sorry it's not an exactly. original thought, but no thought really is original. It's all in the ether. And so I love that. Yes. And so that's, that's one way really is to connect through other people's thoughts and, and podcasts and, you know, things that you see come into your awareness, like just engaging with that is so empowering. And I know a couple people that you have like, re like said to me, Hey, Carla, listening to listen to these people, they kind of have yeah. that butt whooping um mentality yes. that you were ready for like it's like our teachers come into our lives when we are ready for them and you exactly. are ready for someone to kick your butt and you're like okay i guess i need I, i'm gonna listen to this person and so those words are gonna make you feel propelled and motivated into your for own sure. healing because you need to hear words like explode the syndrome and like you know retire self-sacrifice like I am done with that. And I, I can yes. feel that in you. So, um, yeah. So I just wanted to say that those, that those kind of like, sometimes someone like people might be listening to this saying, why well, I, I need a gentle nudge right now. I need to start yeah. self regulating right now. I need to, I need some self love. I need some gentle kindness. And that may yeah. be where you're at. And I've had moments of my life where I need that. And even like, cyclically so throughout the day like I'm like start the day I'm like ready to explode it all and I'm like yeah 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 and then I get to like you know the evening where I'm like I've done that I've been in that outward yin or sorry um yang energy and now I need some gentle kind I need a hug I need I need a bath I need um you know I need like my cat purring by my head you know, I mean, yes. uh, and that's, and so we can choose even throughout the day, what it is, what kind of energy, because there are several different healing or hermetic energies that we're, you know, are going to either make us self-regulate or take on the day. We just need to, yeah. uh, again, be aware of when and, and why we need those throughout our lives and days. Yeah, anyway. exactly. Yeah we go through the deepest storms and um, we question them so much, but we cannot, we cannot really find answers while in a storm. Mm -hmm. Once you get out of it, you understand why you were in it from, you know, uh, to begin with. Yeah. 
you don't have to question it just keep going through it you know and then you'll figure it out after you out it's like okay now that makes sense you know yeah. now i understand why it was there yeah and you know that that's sort of the press process one of the processes i actually teach and i don't know if we've really talked about this it's that um and actually i think it was it was russell brand that made me think of the word chaos as not a bad thing it's mm -hmm. part of a process so at first it's like and then i shifted it over to this thing that i was thinking about like okay, this chaos is all this download, right? Download that and you're like, oh, mm -hmm. it's like when you're trying to sift through your, you, you get the inbox of emails and it's all coming at you. And you go, okay, and then you finally have a chat, yeah. you go through some of it and you're randomly going, what's gonna appear to you to be the right thing to read or listen to or podcast to engage with that day or the right, I don't know, like person that's gonna teach you like yoga or I don't know what it is. Whoever's coming into your life and it's all coming at you. And then you go, okay, I need to integrate this now. So the yes. reflection, right? The, the writing, the thinking, the, you know, like um, self-regulation, all that stuff. So it's like the chaos comes before that integration period. Yeah. So yes. it's going to happen. And so I think part of, I, and I, I think we've talked about this too, Dania, is that part is where we can get, feel anxious if we're not expecting that or welcoming that or knowing that it's a normal thing, you know, that anxiety, exactly. Exactly. but it's normal. It's totally normal to feel overwhelmed. Sometimes it's normal yes. to feel depressed. Sometimes it's normal to feel like I don't got it together. I, I need to get my craft together or I need a little yeah. push off this couch. That's all completely exactly. normal. And I think that's where all the yeah. power lies is to know that. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes also being prepared for mm. just like, you know, when you decide to med meditate, once you get like a panic attack, you're like, okay, now I'm going to meditate. No, it's not <laughs> going to work that way. You know, yeah. you have to start before that big wave hits, you know, yeah. because then you are trained enough to take on the wave and move through it, you know? Otherwise, it's not going to serve you. It's not going to happen at this spot. And, you know, kids these days, unfortunately, they are so focused on what's the quick fix, you know? Uh, how can I get this done quickly? Um, um, my stomach hurts and I don't have time for all that holistic, uh, you know, approach of yours. Um, just, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling well. What do I take? Uh, how you know, teach me how to breathe right now. No, yeah. no, it doesn't work that way. You just have to get your body used to training towards that level, you know, otherwise it's, it's not going to happen. You know, it's just I like, you know, if I'm feeling sad, I probably want to sleep all day. No, get up and push yourself the opposite way. If I'm feeling anxious, I'm going to just say to myself, okay, you know, it's better not to leave the house today because I'm feeling anxious. Leave the house because mm. you just want to actually not suppress the feeling, but you want to, again, push through, you know? Move just, through, yeah. Yes. I, I let, or flow through. How about that? Exactly. Right? So it's yes. not so yes. difficult. It's like, allow it. Like just Exactly. Ride that way. It. Just ride it. Roll. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Ride with it. And then it becomes easier. Like, I love that you say that because when my, uh, what was it? About a, a year after my daughter was diagnosed with type one diabetes, it was like, uh, it was a lot of, like learning curve, but I mean, that's life. Right. And so I, um, I was at, for, I was out for tea. I was at, actually at a friend's house for tea and she'd invited me. We ran into each other and we were both unschooled, unschooling mamas before that. And so this is mm -hmm. where we knew each other. And she was uh, teaching um, a practitioner train, or not practitioner, but like a yoga teacher training. And I was, n that was nowhere near on my radar. Like not, I would had never considered, I started dabbling in like fitness yoga, you know, like I was like, Ooh, doing a tape. And I'm like, this is yoga, but no, I had no idea what yoga was. And I literally was just mm -hmm. doing it to stretch and feel good. And it was kind of fun, you know? And she said, you need to take my program. And I'm like, I do. And she's like, yeah, I'm like, okay. And so I did, and literally it didn't just teach me about like the practice of like yoga and of positions and asanas and like the breath and it was all of that, 
but it also she would i remember her saying and uh, there were some really challenging times like i literally i dragged my kids to the city every weekend and they we stayed at my mom's house because it was 45 minutes away it was too much for me to go back and forth and we stayed there and i did like intensive yoga weekends like from friday supper time all the way to sunday evening and we would practice until we were like gross and sweaty. Then we would do the, these like hour long meditations. And then we would do a bunch of teachings. And during one of those teachings, and it, like literally, and if I was late, you know, in the morning, she'd lock you out because you started, the meditation started. And I would feel sorry for myself and I'd be angry and I'd be like, she, and I wasn't teacher's pet, which I was so used to being. I'm like, oh, I, and, mm -hmm. and I was, mm -mm. and I, I had things like, we had like, you know, these, we had to do like anatomy stuff with like paired up with people that I thought didn't like me. It was so, it was such a, like, it pushed me out of my comfort zone in every single way. And she said, one time she said, practicing this asana, right? Like this super uncomfortable thing would actually was like training for life. And so it's cause you're thinking, why am I in this mm -hmm. pretzel position? Okay. Yeah, sure. I'm going to be better better off, you know, physically, like if I'm, if I'm, if I've got to go haul some water or lift this or whatever, I run up and down the stairs. I can do that. Sure. I can go hang out with my kids in the park and be great. But so it wasn't the only yeah. thing it was practicing that yoga in my mind and, and every day and, and being in that grocery store lineup. And instead of going tick, 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 I got this, eh, I kind of, eh, all these things going through my head. She said, just do mountain pose and you're standing there and you're practicing literally like the asana, like the actual, pose, the, the pose, yeah. but also in your mind, you're practicing your yoga. Like this isn't a big deal. Let this flow. I'm going to be, you know, it's just like, it was, it was so amazing just to have that. Um, so anything you do, right, Danielle, like I, I want to hear about what you've been doing with that, but um, one of those guys that you were talking, that we've been talking about, those butt whoopers, he talks about doing these isometrics exercises where you hold yeah. the plate. I've been doing those every day and my legs are like feeling good, baby. And why else would we do it other than to just do it? And then you, you become um, more and more into your best self, I guess. I don't know how you would explain mm -hmm. that. It's, yeah. how, it's yeah. like, it, there's like sort of a discomfort but you start, you sort of kind of like, not like not liking it in a way that's like, oh, I love to be hurt. No, I mean, but in a way that you're like, I know what this is doing for me. I can feel the change. I feel myself getting stronger and it's yeah. in my mind and my body. Yeah. Yeah. And in, uh, in my case, um, as you know, I, I've dealt with uh, some physical symptoms um, and uh, that sort of like, uh, pushed me a little bit far from, you know, the goal I set for myself, especially lately. Mm -hmm. uh, but it didn't stop me because, you know, if I fall down, I pick myself up, you know, I keep going. I, um, I learned from, uh, you know, Tommy John, the chiropractor That's that, what you know, about. <laughs> yeah, if I want to, if I want to, <laughs> exactly. So um, if, if I want to test myself, I need to see how, how long I can, you know, uh, pull on a bar, you know, I can yes. hang myself on a bar. And to be honest, every now and then I do test myself and I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm a little far from my goal, mm -hmm. but I'm getting better. You know, even if I put a chair maybe underneath me at the beginning to just test my, you know, my ability to do it, but that's okay. You know, slowly I'm you know, moving the chair away from one foot, you know, trying the yeah. other foot, yeah. you know, some days, um, you know, our, like, um, you know, our anxiety can push us backwards, but then we pick ourselves up again and try one more time. You know, I, that's the thing, you know, with me, uh, I know it's a long process. I know I've been away from a lot of self-awareness uh, movements, you know, mm -hmm. but but I'm, I'm, I keep going, I'm trying, I'm, I'm doing it, you know? So that's why I can't tell you where I am right now when it comes to, you know, how far I'm getting to uh, optimal, you know, exercise, but at least I'm pushing myself, I'm doing it, I'm trying. 
Yeah. And so you know, that's the, where goal, the goal isn't to be at this end game where I, I'm perfect and I'm all this stuff because exactly. there's always something else. And so, I mean, it's a, it's an evolution. And so I, for me, Danya, talking to you, you're exactly where you are, you are where you should be. You're absolutely perfect. Like you're perfect. And then we're like, what's next? What's next? What's next? And like, it's exactly. like that idea, the one push up, yeah. you know, just do one. And then tomorrow you do two and then, you know, you just, you just keep going. And then maybe the next day it's not push-ups. Maybe the next day it's like, I feel like I want to go swimming and I'm going to learn how to do yes. that. Or I'm going to learn how to play an instrument and whatever. And there's is. no need for structure. You know, yeah. sometimes we, you know, I, I actually grew up thinking like I have to be in a certain type of, uh, you know, um, activity or like, a, uh, you know, you know, whether it's gymnastics or yoga or, I have to, to label myself into something in order for me to consider myself like a sportive human being, you know, right. and we instill that in our kids' minds, like just about a week ago, my daughter was telling me, she's like, um, uh, you know, I want to do something to, uh, to actually uh, lose some weight. And then um, she's like, well, I was thinking yoga, but why would I do yoga? You know, it's not going to serve me if I want to lose weight. I'm like, don't think that way. <laughs> Any movement yeah. can actually lead to the goal that you're setting because you are moving, you know, yeah. just keep on moving, just keep yeah. on doing it. That's it. You know, there's no structure because the more we label, um, you know, movement with like a structure and names and, you know, the, the less we do, and have to, you know, because we get tired. Yeah. It's like, no, I'm not going to try. I'm too scared to try because I think I have to be really committed to this. No, there's no commitment. There's only movement, you know, mm -hmm. keep moving. Well, and, and so. once, you are mo once you're inspired and motivated, like once you're inspired, you're motivated. And then the commitment is easy because there is commitment. Exactly. I mean, but it's not like eventually it happens yes. first. It happens after. That's so true. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, yes. You know, there okay, will so be a commitment. Definitely. The perfect segue into talking like for the next couple minutes we only have a few minutes left can you believe it we just like yeah. it's all almost done but um that's we, so uh, the, you were saying about your kids bringing your kids up again and being and you're yeah. talking about being the example um but i also think too is like those um i think every child you know should learn some kind of form of self-regulation as well so like when we exactly. talk about like, you know, like what we do at home or curriculums in school, like my kids didn't go like at the beginning, they did a little bit at the in, in high school. But, um, you know, that whole like, I think every kid needs to listen to their bodies. That's what they need to learn. Right. By our example, mm -hmm. as well as like what we teach them. And it's like, oh, listen. And, you know, instead of telling them we're listening and also um, meditation, mindfulness, gratitude, those sorts of things and movement. You were talking about movement. Because all of yeah. those things are so empowering when they can self-regulate and, you know, and watch us do that. It's just become so much more organic. You know, it's so, it, there's less push exactly. pull. Everything just sort of just happens when everybody's doing their own work. Right. Yeah. So true. It's it. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, okay. I want to pick up on a couple things that you said just to close out. Okay. And if you have more to say about that, please do. But one of those things is, um, so I want to wrap up with like, what can moms who are listening to what we're saying do, right? Like, so what's the next step? Okay. So here's our exploration about some of our experiences, but what's like, so one of those things you talked about was self-care and neglect. So not, and, and not to neglect yourself. That's a disservice exactly. to yourself and others. Um, and then you were uh, talking about re emotional regulation. So that's kind of what I just touched on here again, too, like of ourselves and, of, and, and encouraging that in our children, because it's like what Sandy Gluckman says, Dr. Sandy Gluckman, inflammatory parenting. Mm -hmm. And then when you were out respond a certain way, the child has no choice but to respond in that way as well. So again, like exactly. that, right? And then um, yes clear boundaries can you expand on that a little bit boundaries you said so yeah so boundaries um i think that you know we all happen to live in a world that has toxicity you know there are toxic people out there mm -hmm. so if i don't set boundaries to protect myself 
from toxic people, then I'm not doing, I'm, I'm disturbing, disservicing myself, basically. I'm, I'm not serving myself. Yeah. Um, and there's another side of boundaries as well. Sometimes we think it's just that, you know, like keeping the, you know, the harm away from us, protecting ourselves. But it's also finding that boundaries in, in the, you know, when it comes to opening up to the people that we love to be able to be vulnerable enough with them mm -hmm. and just, you know, serve ourselves through that, you know, like open boundary with the ones we trust, you know, that's like a, the, the other side of boundaries, you know, I, I don't know how to call it, but basically, you know, it's, we're always used to setting boundaries by keeping, you know, the doors locked, yes. but this is an open way towards healing as well through actually knowing when to open that door and have that kind of boundaries with the right people, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it does. And mm -hmm. I also, I see boundaries too, as like, uh, you know, setting um, those like healthy boundaries uh, with love healthy rather boundaries, than, yes, rather than exactly. fear and like I've got to keep all this out and I because you're going to hurt me no I, I see everything and I appreciate exactly. all of those lessons yet I don't want to absorb this I, I, I want to see it but I don't want to absorb it I don't want it to become part yes. of it I, I, it's not going to serve me if I allow that in if I allow myself to have you know like work myself to death or you know how people like take advantage of me or, or invite toxic people into my space you know like yeah i'm gonna look i'm gonna release that with love you know i'll i'll, I'll witness exactly. it I, yes. I don't want to take that on yeah create yeah. that intimacy with the people that allow you to feel the love and and you know allow you to be like really you know, upfront and vulnerable with them, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. that sort of boundary is very healthy. It it's is. needed. It is. Yes, definitely. Um, and, a, and then one I other... also wanted to mention, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I, I just wanted to mention that, you know, besides emotional um, uh, regulation, we also, before that comes emotional validation, because if mm -hmm. you don't validate your emotions, how are you going to regulate them? You know, if you don't know what they are and if you don't look into it, you're not going to be able to, you know, know where to start, where to end and where to put, you know, balance. Yeah. So we have to acknowledge yeah. them. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, definitely. Um, one other, one thing I want to leave with, uh, or with everybody with this conversation is you said give yourself the time grace to deep dive and then um mm -hmm. that's going to lead to knowing right what you want and what you need and that's like the motivation toward this whole evolution into that out of the imposter mom and you keep saying i'm an imposter right. mom um and i you know i'm th i'm thinking like nah you're not, and it's you know, it's like it's time to let that go. I, you know, that identification. Former goes. one. <laughs> Former imposter mom, because Danya, yeah. you, uh, you are just like this shining example, and I'm so, I'm so happy we had this conversation because um, you're just an mm -hmm. excellent coach, friend, mom, and I, I was just so, I'm so happy we thank had this you. conversation. I thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much for inviting me. All right. Well, um, okay. So yeah, and I'm just going to sign off and, and thanks everyone for watching. And I hope you enjoy all the rest of the series.